the heart. It will come out of the mouth, it will carry out certain actions and it will express itself. But it comes out of revelation of the heart. You say, oh, but I have only faith in my heart. No, if it's in your heart, ultimately it will be discernible. Hello there, welcome today, welcome to Fresh Dew. Fresh Dew is a program designed for you. It's a program that's designed to build you up and give fresh inspiration and direction for your life. My name is Pastor Shola Kinwale, and I've been given the privilege to come to you with the Word of God by the host of this program, Pastor Nkechi Ene. And we have been looking at a message uh, that we have titled, What Are You Doing With Your Faith? What Are You Doing With Your Faith? And today is part five. I believe we've been learning some good things uh, from this series, I believe so, which we can put, to pra put into practice in our day-to-day -day life apply the faith that God has given us and see results and enjoy victory in our lives. So our text has been taken from Luke's gospel, Luke chapter 8, verse 22 to 26, and we'll read it one more time. Now it happened on a certain day that he got into a boat with his disciples and he said to them, let us cross over to the other side of the lake, and they launched out. But as they sailed, he fell asleep, and a windstorm came on the lake, and they were filling with water and were in jeopardy. And they came to him and awoke him. That's they awoke Jesus, saying, Master, Master, we are perishing. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water, and they ceased, and there was a calm. But he said to them, Where is your faith and they were afraid and marveled saying to one another who can this be for he commands even the winds and the water and they obey him then they sailed to the country of the gatherings which is opposite galilee so when we started out looking at this we brought out the fact that jesus was in a boat like we've seen in our story with the disciples and they were crossing to the other side and as they got into the boat, there was a windstorm and the disciples came to wake Jesus Christ up. And Jesus gave a response, which probably was, may have startled them and was surprising, at least to us, we, would, we, are, we are likely to say that. And he said, said unto them, where is your faith? That tells us that Jesus was looking out for faith, but sadly in this situation, he didn't find that. And perhaps that is an indication of what happens in the lives of the people of God. Many times when we're besieged with situations, one thing God is looking at is our faith in him and not our faith in the problems or the situation. So what have we seen? The first thought we brought out is that you have faith and we defined what faith is, trust, reliance, confidence, and so forth. And that statement where is your faith could imply three things. You have faith but you don't know you have it, you have it, you're not doing anything with it. Or thirdly, you have it, but uh, secondly, you have it, but you don't know how to use it, pardon me. And thirdly, you have it, but you're not putting it into practice. And we said that your faith was given to you by God for you to use. And you re need to realize that as a child of God, you have faith. You don't want to approach faith from a standpoint of something you don't have, something you're looking for, something you're going to find as though it was something totally extraneous and external to you. No, as a child of God, you have faith. And uh, Paul said, we've received the measure of faith. Peter said, we have the God kind of faith. And then we looked at the story of Jesus and the disciples, the same story. And we saw demonstrated in that case, why Jesus expected them to have faith. All right. Then we move to the second point, which we said, I believe we started that, by saying that faith is discernible. That's the second point. So we'll just continue with that. We said that faith can be seen. On by, when we said faith is discernible, we started by saying that faith can be seen. It's a spiritual force, but even though it's a, it's a spiritual force, does not mean that it cannot be seen or it cannot be perceived. And we expressed, uh, we, we, we explained that. But now let's take this a step further. When we say faith is discernible, like I've said severally, 
in the course of this teaching that when Jesus told his disciples, where is your faith? We can rest assured that in part, Jesus was saying that I can't see faith here. Why? He did not, he recognized faith. He knew what faith is or he knows what faith is and what the disciples evidently displayed before him was something else other than faith. Now, this is a principle you find lists out throughout, threaded through the Gospels, that Jesus would often recognize faith. And that's what I want us to see today. Jesus often recognized faith. And severally in the Gospels, we read where it says he saw people's faith or he perceived their faith. He saw faith and he, or, and or he perceived it, really referring to the same thing. Now, let me give you some examples of this. I will look at two of this uh, today. The first one I want us to look at is Matthew chapter 8, verse 5 to 13. You see, when, when, when you study the life and ministry of Jesus, you find principles. And these principles are not in isolated in, in, uh, instances. They are principles that work that we can say these are like cardinal rules in the kingdom, they won't obtained in one place. You're likely to find it in another place. I also find it played out in yet another place. So I want to give you some examples. We won't go into the nuts and bolts of all of the texts we're going to read, but I'll show you a few things to, show, uh, to, to convince you, hopefully, I believe, that Jesus recognized faith when he saw it. Matthew 8, 5 to 13. Now, when they entered Capernaum, a, a centurion came to him, pleading with him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home, paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. Then the centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof. But speak a word, and my servant will be healed. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this one, go, and he comes, and to another, come, and he comes. And to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to those who followed, which would likely be his disciples who followed him, Assuredly, I say to you, I have not found such great faith not even in Israel. And I say to you that many will come from the east and the west and sit with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven, but the sons of the kingdom will be cast out into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of, of teeth. Then Jesus said to the centurion, go your way, and as you have believed, so let it be done for you. And his servant was healed that same hour. You see, look at verse 10 in this text again. It says, when Jesus heard it, heard what? What the centurion said to him, right? What the centurion said to him. Then Jesus used him as an example, a case study. And he made this statement. He said to those who followed, assuredly, I say to you, I have not found such great faith. No, not in Israel. Notice, I have not found. So if Jesus said, I have not found, what does that tell you? Well, I believe it's easy to infer that he was looking for such faith. Now, he said he marveled, is what he says in verse 10, and he was surprised. That's the meaning of marvel. Marvel means that this surpri surprised Jesus. Well, why was Jesus surprised? Well, he was surprised because this man who exercised this faith was not a Jew. He was a Gentile. If he were, were a Jew, Jesus wouldn't technically be surprised, but because they had what it take, what it took, pardon me, they had what it took to develop or to have such great faith. And I'll come to that in a moment. But Jesus said that he, he was, Jesus marveled at this man's faith. He said, I've not found such faith, not just faith, so great faith. That is a faith of this kind, the faith of this sort. Why did Jesus say so? What is it about this man's faith that Jesus recognized it? Well, Jesus recognized it because the man expressed his faith, number one, in his words. But apart from it, the words that he spoke, he expressed his faith with words against the big bedrock of revelation or he revealed that he had a keen understanding of authority. All we need to do is to look at the words he said to Jesus. Jesus 
He meets Jesus. He has a, se a servant at home. Luke's account tells us that the servant was very dear to him. So this was not just a, a servant. It was very special to him. And Jesus, he said, come and heal my servant. And Jesus said, I will come. Actually, if you put Matthew and Luke's accounts together, it says to the effect, Luke tells us that he sent his servant he sent his, uh, 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 some Jews ahead of him to go and meet Jesus. And that even goes right on with what the man said, because the man met Jesus with people he had sent with his words. And Jesus, I told Jesus, the same way I sent these people with my words, you also actually don't need to come. The man said, look, I'm a man under authority. You don't need to come to my house because I'm not worthy. And he was right right in the sense that he was a Gentile. Jesus was a Jew. It was understood that it was not kosher. It was not proper for Jesus to keep company with the Gentile. Of course, Jesus broke all those rules. But the man was right because the Jews were those who had the covenant promises of God and who primarily, according to the flesh, Romans 9 tells us, Jesus came. Remember, Jesus also told his disciples when he sent them to preach the gospel, don't go in the way or path of the Gentiles, don't enter the way of Samaritans, go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Because that was his primary assignment, that was his, his message was sent to them. So the man was correct in saying that. And But he goes further to say, you don't need to come to my house because I am a man set under authority. I tell somebody go and he goes. I tell somebody come, somebody under me who I have authority over and he comes. I recognize who you are. You see, this man was a soldier in the army of Rome. He was a centurion. He had a jurisdiction. Centurion well, you, of course, you hear the word century, you hear hundred from that. So I am placed under authority, right? I'm under the authority of Rome, and Rome has given me an assignment, has given me a scope. I have hundred men who are accountable to me. These hundred people answer to me. If I tell my servant who is, the, who is under my authority, go, he doesn't question, he goes. If I ask one to come, he doesn't say, come where? He comes, he obeys, he's a soldier. So I recognize who you are. You are the son of God. You are God sent by God. And you, because you are sent by God, God definitely gave you a scope of authority, which was true. Therefore, if you say something, the same way I tell my servant to do this, and he has no choice but to do it, you also, I recognize your scope. Sickness, disease, this condition that my servant had, he has been oppressed by it. this condition that ails my servant comes under your authority. All you need to do is to speak a word. Once you speak that word, my servant will be well. And Jesus gasped and said, whoa, I've not found this faith. So you see, the man's words indicated his heart. Remember we said the last time that faith starts from the heart. It will come out of the mouth. It will carry out certain actions and it will express itself but it comes out of revelation of the heart. You say, oh, but I have only faith in my heart. No, if it's in your heart, ultimately it will be discernible. It will be somebody who recognizes it will know that this is faith. And Jesus saw that, that if this man could speak of authority this way, then he shows that he has faith. Not just faith, Jesus said, great faith. Great faith. And Jesus said, I have not found it. Because that means up until this time in his ministry, Jesus hadn't found this kind of faith. And remember that Jesus was ministering among the Jews predominantly. And what is it about the Jews? Well, Paul said in Romans chapter 3, I believe verse 3, what advantage is there of being a Jew and what profit is there of circumcision? He says, much in every way but chiefly, primarily, because unto them were committed the oracles of God, that is, the word of God, was delivered to Israel. And he said, but what of if some of them did not believe? Shall that make the faith or the faithfulness of God, the word of God, the credibility of God, will it make it of no effect? He said, God forbid, let God be true and let every man a liar, be a liar. So Jesus did not find this faith among the people of God because they had the word of God to produce such a kind of faith. He found it, among a, found it in the heart of a Gentile who expressed his faith through his words, and those words actually were backed up 
uh, as a result came, I should say, as a result of the deep revelation of the authority that God had vested in Jesus Christ as a man. And that was what Jesus saw and said, this definitely, this most certainly is great faith. So you see, Jesus commended that faith. And if Jesus said he hadn't found this faith, it seems to say to me that he was looking for this kind of faith. And anytime Jesus saw great faith, he would commend it. He would stop and make an issue of it because it wasn't the common denominator in that day. It was a rare commodity among the covenant people, but that ought not to, that shouldn't have been the case. And if that indictment was on Israel then, then if Jesus comes today into the church and doesn't find faith, then that's a sad, that, that's a sad day. That's a sad day because we have the full revelation of God for mankind unveiled in Jesus Christ now contained, to, uh, contained for us in the pages of the Bible. Another example that shows this was when Jesus saw the faith of the paralytic and his friends. This is another story. You find this in Matthew 9, I believe verse 1 to 11 or so. But I want to read it from Luke's, uh, Mark's account. Mark 2, 1 to 5. And again, he entered Capernaum after some days, and it was heard that he was in the house. Immediately many gathered so that there was no, long, no longer room to receive them, not even at, near the door, and he preached the word to them. Then they came to him, bringing a paralytic who was carried by four men. And when they could not come near him because of the crowd, they uncovered the roof where he was. So when they had broken through, they let down the bed on which the paralytic was lying. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven, are forgiven you. Here is another case where Jesus saw faith. It says in verse 5, when Jesus saw their faith, that's the corporate faith of the paralytic and his friends, he now turned to the paralytic, the one who actually needed the healing, and spoke, gave the faith command that actually brought him up of that bled, out of that up from that bed of affliction. Now remember that in the case of the centurion of the centurion, Jesus saw great faith expressed through the man's word. In other words, which conveyed that he had a revelation of authority. So a revelation of authority will uh, enable somebody de de depict and manifest great faith, manifest faith in their life. Here is another example. Here is another example where Jesus said here in verse 5 that the Bible says he saw their faith. Now, what is it about their faith that he saw? What was it about their faith that he saw? Here is a, a man who had been bedridden. He hadn't walked apparently for a while. And the people heard, if you read it earlier on, it says that uh, it was noised, verse, verse 2, verse 1. It says, and it was heard that he was in the house. The King James says, it was noised that he was in the house. So Jesus is here, Jesus is here, Jesus is here. And people gathered because of what Jesus did. He spoke God's words. And he performed miracles. So people gathered. Obviously, Jesus performed miracles. Otherwise, they wouldn't have brought that man there. But when they got there, they met an obstacle. They met a crowd. A crowd was gathered at the door of the house. And people could not come in. And then the, 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 the man and his friends looked, looked around. They couldn't pass through the crowd. The crowd was not going to move for them. The crowd wasn't going, going to, the crowd wasn't saying, you're on the bed. Well, you don't know why we came here. You don't know, do you think your case is more important than ours? We want to see Jesus. We need him. We, we, you know, we want to see him. It brings to mind the woman with the issue of blood. Of blood. The scripture says she pressed through the crowd. But in this case, well, they couldn't press through. They couldn't meander their, themselves through the crowd. So what did they do? Pardon me. They looked up. And when they looked up, they saw the, the ceiling. And that was their way out. You see, faith will always see a way out of the situation. Faith will always see. The man could have said it was not possible to see Jesus today. The, there was a mammoth crowd at the mouth of the door of Jesus' lodging. We couldn't get in. They could have turned back. They could have been disappointed. The man may have remained bedridden, bedfast on his bed. He may have died. But when you are in faith, when your actions are propelled by faith, faith will always get God, will always, right, 
draw from the power of God. Faith will always lay hold on the power of God. When they got there and there was a crowd, their faith found a way. Their faith found a way. They chose not to be denied. And they said, Jesus is right there. We need to see Jesus today. Anyway, anyhow, we have to see Jesus. And they couldn't pass through the crowd. And they ripped it, the, the ceiling open, dropped the man down there. And pardon me, they, they rudely interrupted Jesus. But here's the interesting thing. Jesus doesn't mind. In fact, because Jesus is always finding faith. Thank you, Lord. Remember we saw... I have not found so much faith. When Jesus, faith was such a rare commodity in his days among the people he ministered to, that when he saw it, it's, he stopped it. He stopped everything else. Jesus was preaching the word. We don't know what else happened after this story. All we know is that those men interrupted Jesus. They dropped the man down. And when Jesus saw their faith, he spoke to the man. What was it that made Jesus see their faith? The fact that they came they came through the crowd and most important, they came through the crowd. They saw that the crowd would not let them pass. And most importantly, they went out of their way to do something which was seemingly impossible or difficult. They let the man down through the roof. Man, that was faith. And when Jesus saw that, he said, this is faith. And he saw their faith and he spoke the word of command by the spirit of God. He knew the man was dealing with a condemnation situation. And he said, your sins are forgiven you. Arise, take your bed and, you, you, and walk. And the man glorified God. He found their faith. He saw their faith because he recognized their words. Their, sorry, he recognized their actions. Faith will always take risks. That's why I said in the last episode, though faith is spiritual, it is discernible. There will always be something that the spirit of faith will impel you, will compel you, will inspire you to carry out in this physical world that God sees, right? God is all seeing, that serves good to give a basis for that manifestation to come, to come. And I hope you get that. There is something you do. It's, it's, you're not doing it to earn God's goodness, you're doing it, it is the faith that is inspiring what they, what they did. A person, somebody can go through all the motions and everything and not be in faith, but in this case, Jesus, who knew faith, who is the author and finisher of faith, like I've said severally, saw this and said, guys, this is faith, and arise, take up your bed, and walk. So when God sees that faith, what you desire, what you want, he sees it and he honors it and that desire is granted. Faith is discernible. Father, thank you for your word. Oh, thank you for showing us. And we're beginning to see that we can use our faith and it will produce results for us. We give you praise, Father, and we give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Are you alive, but not really living life? Do you know somewhere deep down that something needs to change in the course of your life? Does it feel like you have lost your way in life? Yet to others, you seem to know your way. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Can you believe that somewhere on the inside of you? Do you believe it? He is the answer to every question, and he loves you just the way you are. Today he's waiting for you with arms open wide and he wants you just the way you are. Will you make a decision today to surrender your life to him and run into those outstretched arms? If you want to do that, say this prayer out loud, meaning it from the depth of your heart and you will be saved. Lord Jesus, come to you today. I believe you are the Son of God and that you died for me and rose again just to save me. Come into my heart and make me brand new as you have promised. I will live for you all the days of my life. In your name, I pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Congratulations 
on taking the most important decision of your life. You are now born again and a brand new person. It has all happened on the inside of you. Now you need to grow in your new faith. And what has happened on the inside will surely be reflected in your everyday life. We can help you grow in your new faith. Please call us at 0700 Fresh Dew or email us at saved at freshdew.tv and we'll be here for you. Romans 10, 17 says, So then, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You can order today's message and other past messages on our website store, freshdew.tv. It is available on MP3 and CD and also on MP4 and DVD just as seen on TV. Fresh Dew, giving you fresh inspiration and direction for your life. Thank you for watching Fresh Dew today with Pastor Nkichi Ene. We trust you were blessed by today's episode. For further information on Fresh Dew, please call us on 0700 Fresh Dew, which is 0700 3737 4339. If you're calling from outside Nigeria, the number will be plus 234 700 3737 4339. Our phones are open from 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. GMT plus one. You can also send us an email to info at freshdew.tv and we'll be glad to serve you. We also invite you to like, follow and interact with us on our Twitter and Facebook pages at Freshdew TV and also on Pastor Nkechi's Facebook pages at Pastor Ketch. For more information on how you can partner with Freshdew and receive Pastor Nkechi's monthly letters and weekly MP3 gifts, please visit our website, www.freshdew.tv. Once again, thanks for being with us today, and we look forward to seeing you next time on Fresh Dew to receive fresh inspiration and direction for your life.